Hello and good morning my creative friends, Dr. Minette Riordan here. This is Painting in Your PJs Live with Minette, where we use art as a creative process for self-discovery and personal growth. And over the last few sessions we've been exploring, and I was looking for my handout, which I buried here somewhere. So maybe it doesn't matter, but we've been exploring relationships. We've been exploring relationships first with our self, the different aspects of our self. On Tuesday's live, we looked at relationships with others. And today I want to expand that to really look at our relationships with universal themes of the divine or God, whatever your word for that is. Uh, universal themes of humanity, universal themes of nature. So when we are connected to something that is greater than ourself and, uh, and we have that sense of our own interconnectedness to everything that's out in the universe, we feel different about our lives and about the, the world and about other people. I am listening to a book by Michael Singer called Living the Untethered Life. He's the author of The Untethered Soul, one of my favorite books. And I was listening to him talk this morning about the connection between science and the divine. And my head is kind of full of all this science-y star-like information. It was really kind of fascinating. But as I wanted to continue our journey this week, good morning, everyone. Great to see you. Good evening, Jackie. Uh, as we continue our journey through intuitive collage, I want to take a little bit different approach today. So you noticed if you watch some of the previous videos, from the last couple of days that I've been working on these individual journey circles. And there's a reason for creating individual collage. You took his course. Oh, that's so cool, Lisa. I love that. I don't know if I knew that he had a course. Um, fantastic. I love listening to him uh, read his books. So I've been working on these individual collages. Good morning, Cindy. And the reason that I work on the individual High Carol collages is because they're movable. And because for two reasons. One, they're movable, so I can play with them, move them around, see the different stories they tell. So that's reason number one. Reason number two is that each one of these collages holds the energy of one story, one archetype, one meaning. So this is me and my hubby and our relationship, one story. My kids are not in this picture for a reason. That would be a whole different story. That would be a family story. Same with this one, right? This is a, a shadow story of a little girl always reaching for love and perhaps not finding it. And so that is one story. I wouldn't put, where's my little happy inner child? These two little children on the same card because they tell a different story, right? And so it's important to sometimes think about what's the story that we're trying to tell with our work. And that can help us get a focus of where we're going with our collage. One of the really fun parts of working on individual collages like this one in whatever size or shape you choose, it could be index cards, they could be small playing cards like oracle cards, an old deck of oracle cards is great when you're complete with a deck uh, to create over the top of them and to be able to move them around and tell stories. And that's going to make more sense at the end of what I my plan is for today, which is I'm going to go ahead and change my camera. And if you're brand new here, welcome. You'll notice that this is totally stream of consciousness. I probably ramble a bit. I probably repeat myself. And I always get to the point eventually, so hang in there with me. All right, so I'm gonna have to zoom my camera out. Bear with me for one second. Hopefully I don't make you too dizzy. Get that out of the way of the paint. I really felt like I wanted to bring in two different things than we have been doing for the last couple of sessions. So we have talked about using a lot of magazine imagery for intuitive collage. Today I want to combine 
imagery and paint. And I'm going to do that on one of my favorite substrates to work on. This is a cake round, sometimes called a pizza round. You can get them at craft stores. I usually get them at Michael's. You can also order big sets of them uh, on Amazon. And what I love about these, so as you perhaps know about me, I love anything that's in a circle shape. So sacred circles, mandalas, journey circles, and these big circles become like a playground for mapping with our collage imagery. So when I start to think about what can I possibly create out of this story and what might be a fun container for the story of the relationships that have been emerging. So remember that we looked at three different types of relationships. We looked at relationship to self, we looked at relationship to others, and then today we are looking at our relationship to the universal. And what popped into my mind as I was preparing for this was one, bright colors, but also abstract. So I wanna start by just getting some color down on this this big circle. This is just cardboard. And um, make sure I get the lid back on there. And then I'm going to put the collage images over the, the top of that. And as I'm putting this paint on here, I'm thinking I wish that uh, I had done some writing on here. So where did I see? So I'm just going to grab a pen. So I want to start thinking about um, my relationship to the divine, to nature, to humanity. And I'm starting this in the same way that I would start an art journal page, starting with words and writing, starting with getting my own marks and handprints on there and going to have this be a multi-layered mixed media piece. So when I think about the universal, for me, the interconnection or interconnectedness is something that always comes to the foreground of my thought. I'm writing large, I'm writing messy. I don't know why the, the word poetry is really popping into my head. I think because for me, poetry is such a powerful way of articulating the universal. It tends to be that metaphoric language that we all buy into. When I think about the universal, I also think about the archetypal. And archetypes are simply unconscious universal patterns that exist across time and across all cultures. They often appear in myths. The most most uh, classic version of that is Joseph Campbell's The uh, Hero's Journey. And so archetypal, universal archetypal imageries, the hero, the villain, um, the guide or the mentor, the wise one, the sage, right? You know, we think about Harry Potter and Lord of the Rings, our hero always had traveling companions. Those are archetypal imagery that appear throughout every myth across time. Think about Little Red Riding Hood, right? And we have Little Red Riding Hood is our heroine and the wolf is the villain in the story. So all of this for me are some of the things that start to come together in the universal. And when I think about a symbol that really represents that universal imagery of our interconnectedness. The thing that just popped into my head, and I'm just going intuitively here, none of this is thought out ahead of time, but what's popping into my mind is I love how trees, for me, symbol interconnectedness. They are represent the what's uh, below as well as what's above, right? They hold the energy of the rootedness and the reaching for the skies as well. I think of the energy of the sun. And I always love starting an intuitive piece with this kind of really simple mark making. Nowhere to go, nowhere to be. There's no destination in mind here. This is just getting something down, starting to activate this circle that when it's complete is going to represent a universal space holder for me that then I can bring my individual collages back into that universal story and start to tell. 
and talk about them. So when I was thinking about adding paint, I instantly thought of swirls. When I think about the universal movement of energy, when I think about the interconnectedness of all things, spirals. And there's something so soothing. If you got a piece of paper and a pen or you're painting along, there is something about the mesmerizing and meditative way uh, that our arm moves and our hand moves when we make spirals that is really kind of magical. A little more pink over on that side. And I'm already loving this. I'm loving the simplicity of it. I love that I can still see some of my own marks around underneath and through the edges. I'm loving how the colors are sort of mixing and blending together. And it's kind of started taking a on a little bit of a, a life of its own. Maybe this sort of dominant spiral might be a focal point and probably most of this is going to get covered up with collage. And that's okay because what I'm feeling into here, and this is part of that journey of working intuitively, is being willing to build up the layers and to let go of the layers, to paint over them, to create over them, to let the story emerge and unfold. The the richness that we often don't really get when we first start creating intuitively or we start art journaling and we see people's beautiful pages is the number of layers, right? And to paint over and over, to be willing to let go. Talk about uh, universality and uh, our connection to the divine. It is so much about surrendering to what is, right? Being in a state of acceptance of what is and then surrendering and letting go. And every time I say let go, of course, I hear the lyrics to Frozen somewhere in my head. So now I have this happy page of spirals. And what I'm feeling like is I, I'm still wanting to kind of be in those spirals, but I don't need any more paint on here. So I'm just taking the end of a paintbrush and just allowing, making some marks, scratching through that sort of moving some of that color around, maybe just a little bit. And the more we learn to trust and follow the intuition of what shows up, the smoother things tend to go. Right? And so don't second guess yourself. Just follow your intuition. All right, so I'm loving this circle. I'm going to set it aside somewhere over here to dry up a little bit. And I'm going to start going through my images and start to, and I, and I have a, a big stash of them here, and start to maybe think about what wants to come out. Oh, look at this beautiful gold gate here. That would be super fun. That feels like part of something else. She really feels like celebrating that divine imagery. And when I look at this, look, what's interesting is that it's the same color palette as I picked and I picked the colors intuitively. I pretty much just looked at my giant pile of paint and grabbed three also felt like the energy of a butterfly really needs to be on here. And I'm going to work pretty quickly here and focus a little more on tearing images, not having to have those images be perfect. Feels somehow even closer to the divine, letting go of need for perfection. I love all these little bits and pieces. This is a, a photocopy of a, a piece of collage paper, I think. 
All right. So I'm looking at this going, the black feels heavy. The black doesn't feel right for this particular piece. So I'm setting that aside for something else. This is interesting. It feels like there, there's a hand that's sort of pulling back the edge, peeling back the edge of something. And I actually have two hands that I pulled out. I've been obsessed with hands lately. I have some scrappy bits here. These flowers feel fun. They feel like that connection to nature. For me, my personal connection to the universal always begins with my deep connection to nature. So we get a couple of flowers. That's kind of fun, but I'm not sure. We've got more butterflies. So I'm definitely feeling that I want something more image-based, less abstract, except I have these beautiful painty pieces and I had previously drawn a bird on here. That bird is kind of fun. Where did all of my scissors go? So I'm gonna cut this little birdie out and we'll just see, right? So again, this is about just following the flow to create. And so this is a much larger piece. You may not finish it in one session or if you're like me and you work fast, it could come together really in just a few minutes time. I have quite a few of these large rounds floating around the studio. I have one that represents sanctuary. I have one that's a resting place. I have one, I have others that are more universal. My secret garden from the secret garden mythical makeover experiences on one of those large rounds. I have a, some beautiful garden imagery. I think these little birds are uh, from one of Megan Quinlan's fun stencil sets. I love her stencils. And the background of this paper is something I jelly printed on. So this is a great time when you're working on these big rounds to pull out all of those scrap, scrappy bits of paper. These feel like some, maybe some good backgroundy things. Love this big fern. I am a sucker for ferns. A few years ago, we uh, drove up all the way through California to Vancouver, British Columbia to go visit universities and visit with my daughter and visit my husband's parents and family in Vancouver. And uh, one of the things we did was we went out to the coast and there is an amazing park out in the middle of nowhere that is just this fern canyon that was incredible. So this hand somehow felt really, I think maybe because she's holding flame, she's holding acorns. This one has really, it's been floating around all week now and it feels like it's part of this universal of divine, like there's this offering here that is beautiful. There's also this uh, intuitive sense of being a holder of the light, that more universal energy. I really, really love this one where it reminds me of uh, Pirates of the Caribbean a little bit, right? Where they had to turn the ship upside down to get to the other side of the world. And uh, we have the ship and the constellations here, but we can also turn it this way. And there's this beautiful blooming garden. It kind of represents a little bit of that mystery of the universe. It's a, an absolutely beautiful painting. She's still floating around. Talk about just the, that wise woman energy feels good, perhaps, for this collage. Those crazy seagulls, that feels way too chaotic for me. This is not the, the image that I want. And then I have a whole bunch of other little fun things. No, it's our anniversary, not birthday, anniversary. Did I say birthday somewhere? I, I might have, but it's anniversary. 
his birthday was in March. But no, it's our 28th wedding anniversary. So we're going to Key West um, and Miami to go to a story marketing workshop and also to Key West. And if you read my newsletter yesterday, you saw that we managed to get tickets to go to Dry Tortugas National Park, which I am thrilled with. Okay, these little ladies don't belong. Maybe that heart something about this image feels really wonderful it says dreamer rise and shine almost mermaid like holding some balloons here we've got an angel and then we have all these people and this wonderful image of this little boy that i just love and i had been flipping through some collage this is how intuitive art works I had been flipping through some boxes of collage and I'd cleaned up and put them all together. Um, Yvonne, I'm wondering if you... Uh, March birthdays. Yeah, so we have lots and lots of March birthdays. Um, Yvonne, I'll have my husband check what's happened. You might have unsubscribed to uh, like a marketing email at some point and it took you off the newsletter list. So let me find out and I can uh, get that fixed up for you. Thank you, Lisa. But yes, everyone in my family, uh, my dad, my husband, my son, and my nephew, and my stepmom, when she was still alive, all had March birthdays. And April is anniversaries. Uh, it's my parents' anniversary. It's my in-laws' anniversaries. And um, it's Brad and I's anniversary as well. So something about this little boy. But thank you for the celebration, no matter what. That's what happens when you watch old replays, right? And that aren't dated. Something about him. So first of all, he has flags all over his little jacket from different countries. Uh, mostly it looks like in the Middle East. And I just love the smile on his face. And there's something so delightful about him. And children also often represent that universality, right? I also love that it is a child of color and uh, that's very different from me and yet the same as me. And so there's something about him that really speaks to, to that universality. And look at that cute little mushroom. I had to cut that little mushroom out. Also loved this flower. Again, you can notice the colors I was being drawn to. So here was my handout. It was right in front of me all, all the time. So this week we've been exploring relationships. We started with the self. Now we're looking at that relation, or we looked at the relational on Tuesday, and today we're here in the energy of the universal. And we're going to sort of build all this up into something. Not sure what yet, but something, something. Okay, I'm going to hit this with the dryer, so bear with me for just a second. Got that paint on there pretty thick. Just trying to get some of that thick paint off there. Oh look, it's moving around. Well, that's kind of fun. Unanticipated, always the best. All right, so. I'm going to create something, something here that represents the universal. And I feel like I'm going to start here and I'm going to start by laying things out. And I'm almost feeling like somehow it's going to be this sort of movable wheel. And then it's going to grow from the center out in different directions. Kind of like that picture of that ship. Something about these feel like some kind of pillar. 
feeling that imagery, that sort of mandala-like imagery of the, the sacred circle. Where this large wheel becomes representative of all of the individual parts. as well as the whole. This heart. Yes, Georgia. I love this blue. Look at that gorgeous collage that was from a art journaling magazine. This artist had the most wonderful collages. Yes, I see you. I know, we're tearing paper. How fun is that? Again, there's no sort of rhyme or reason. I'm just sort of constructing as I go. Uh, yeah, that's not going to work, Missy. I was working on recordings for uh, a new class I'm creating that's going to be all about intuitive collage. I'm super excited. And um, I think both the cats appeared in there. So I love this raven that says, I've discovered magic, but it's feeling like these sort of darker, heavier images, heavier in contrast, are going to go down at the bottom here. And what I'm seeing is that I don't think that I have enough images. I love this little collage by an artist that says, for my heart, please handle carefully. Put her up here. All right, you, off you go. So I'm not thinking intentionally here about, oh, I need this image or that image. What I'm holding on to is just this question of what holds the energy of the universal? What holds the energy of the universal? I'm asking myself, what's the story that I want to be telling here? What's the story that is emerging and unfolding? And what I'm missing is more nature images, like more, more like this, more flowers. This one's beautiful, so maybe we'll get that Get that apple on there, right? A little bit of the tree of life story. So as I'm laying all this out, what I'm reminding myself is that when I get images, and I don't need to cover the whole thing by any means, um, I want to take a picture of it so that I remember where all the images go because once I start gluing things down, oh, I have lost something under here, those rings. Uh, let's put you up there because I want to remember where all of these things go once I start gluing them down. So I will snap a picture of my phone to use as a guide for gluing. So I kind of like this one. And I'm going to let things flow over the edge and trim as I go. I know, me too. I can't wait to hear the story also. So here's some more. Feels like more things blooming and growing. I can even have things sort of hanging over the edge. This fern was uh, photocopied on vellum. And so it's got that little bit of transparency to it, which I love. 
All right. Okay, I didn't think I was going to do this, but I'm going to do it. Oh, that was a big moment. So, you know, I felt resistance to tearing up that painting because it's so beautiful. But what I wanted was the boat, that movement, that journey. All right, we've got our happy little birdie here. So again, things that represent nature, bringing some light in, picking up the purples in that raven. Almost feels like she's got a flower crown there. So I love creating large like this, and even in a large piece like this, it feels like they're, uh, I run out of room, right? I run out of room. So do I just put her over the top? That almost feels like what's happening is, you know, that she's opening up into the universal here. She is accepting and expanding all of it. So I'm gonna get rid of the scarf that she's holding. And we're gonna plop her down in the center is sort of holding, holding that space of inviting it all in is how she feels, like she's inviting it all in. All right, so this one is not gonna make it on unless maybe we'll see. If I let go of the little birdie. <clears throat> All right, so I think this is my story, my energetic space holding here for what feels like symbols of universal energy, archetypal connections to the divine, to all of humanity, to my own divinity, and to nature as well. And man, spring nature, she's a tricky one here in Colorado. We woke up to snow this morning. That was a little unexpected. What I love about spring snow is it won't last. Okay, and I know I had more glue sticks. I'm probably gonna need all my glue sticks for this one. So I am going to take a picture. So that I remember where all the images go. And it's cool to take a picture and look at it because you really get a sense of where the images are. I get a sense of color balance, things I wasn't necessarily looking for as I was intuitively placing things down and I'm noticing these beautiful spots of blue are really speaking to me and I may wanna bring those out. So maybe there's gonna be uh, some more paint or marks added over the, the top of this. So uh, taking a picture of your work is always a great tool Okay, so I am going to one little spot at a time find the image that's on the bottom. And I'm not going to worry about gluing these things down perfectly at the moment. I can always add more glue later, add more paint, even even put a layer of matte medium down. And it's never gonna come out exactly the same once I glue it down. So as I'm gluing here, one of the, the things about intuitive collage, like where the magic really starts to happen is in working with your collages. So let's talk a little bit about interpreting your collages. So if you've ever done any kind of puppet play, 
you'll be familiar with this or if you've done any kind of there's you know certain types of therapy stream of consciousness journaling uh, dialoguing with the unknown all are ways that we can approach working with understanding and interpreting our own collage and I have always loved the way that soul collage teaches us how to dialogue with our creative work and this often starts with the phrase I am one who all right she's going to go over there for a minute because she's going to go way on the top and when you look at a collage, you can look at it a couple of different ways. You can look at it through the lens of the whole collage. So there's a story that emerges when I look at the this collage overall. But I can also just tell the story of this one character. I am one who is madly in love with my husband. I am one who is exploring romance for the first time. I am one who loves adventure. So I am one who is a powerful statement to begin to understand the character of the collage as separate from ourselves and as a tool for self-discovery and for getting answers to questions that sometimes we may not even know that we have. Another question that you can ask is, what's the message that you have for me today? What's the message that you have for me today? Another great one. Okay, so I'm going to go back up to the other side and work from the top. I'm going to get this fern glued down. You can ask your collage, what is the gift that you have for me today? What is the gift that you have for me today? Another great question to ask. One of my favorite questions when working with intuitive collage is, what do you want me to know that I don't know now? What do you want me to know that I don't know now? Another version of that is trying to glue and talk at the same time. What do you wish I knew about you? So imagine if I took this card and I did the I am one who with this little girl and then I asked her, what is it that you wish I knew about you that I don't know? I wonder what her answer might be. It might be something like, I need you to talk to me more. Um, I need you to pay attention. I need you to make sure we're safe. Some of the stories that might emerge. All right, where'd her flower crown go? I think this one needs a little love fussy cutting here. So those are some pretty great journaling prompts to begin the process of interpretation of one particular collage when you have like one card or multiple cards that you've created start with the individual stories and then in a minute here we're going to look at how can we map some of those bigger stories and you notice i took that picture with my phone and i'm not really looking at that picture at all i'm glad i took it so i have it and I'm just sort of intuitively placing these, trusting that they're going to go down in the right position, wherever they are meant to be. All right, she needs this heart.
Hmm. Maybe that ship is going to live over here. I'm not sure yet. And there was his little heart. His big heart overflowing there. And as I glue, I'm sort of just looking at the images a little more closely. I went pretty quickly through that first version of sifting and sorting. And now I'm a little more in the being a little more intentional, asking where they belong. I might notice that things move around. You can see I'm trimming things as I go. And when I create a large piece like this, I will be looking for the story as a whole more than an individual story. The smaller collages definitely lend themselves to those more personal, I am one who, but this one feels, again, it's that universal theme, right, is what I was seeking here. Noticing how things are moving and shifting. Georgia's literally over there with her paws, flipping through the pages of a journal, trying to get inside the journal. That she is such a little peeper thief. Okay. Hmm, maybe she's going to go up here between these other two characters. Both of them have their hearts on them. Oops. This is a very mushy. These are not my favorite glue sticks. These are the Elmer's kids ones. And they stick fine, but they're almost too soft. All right. I am going to slow down here for a second, see where where I'm at, where I was going. This definitely still feels like that center. And maybe those are both coming up like that. How's everybody doing this morning as you're watching and listening? Do you have any questions, anything you're curious about when it comes to creating intuitively or interpreting your own work? Happy to answer specific questions. I'm noticing words creeping into this one. Normally with my intuitive collage, there's not a lot of words. I kind of uh, try to not choose words, but some of this art had these beautiful words on it that felt appropriate for this theme of universality. Yes, Georgia is definitely exploring her inner artist for sure. And awesome, I'm glad you're creating a long, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. This somehow feels like an, an eye or a centerpiece. All right, and this often happens to me when I start to glue things down. They uh, blend together, they get closer together, and I end up not having as many images as I thought I did. And we're going to see if that's going to be okay, if we're going to want a little more. I love her floating up out of here. And I'm feeling like maybe I want some more of this ferny stuff in the background. Maybe we'll just make her pop out from the busyness of that a little bit.
thank you, Lisa, for saying that about wondering if you're forcing an answer. You'll feel it in your body if you're forcing it, right? You'll be able to to tell. And I think the, the trick is that we don't always get the answer right away. And it takes uh, sometimes a little bit of patience. You know, sometimes I won't know what a card means for months and all of a sudden, a particular card might pop into my mind and I'll go find it and pull it out and the story will emerge. So what I love about working with intuitive collage, whether it's the big circles or the individual pieces, or these are living works of meaning, not even works of art, but living works of meaning. And we may not know in the moment and, uh, don't stick them in a drawer and just forget about them and let them and have them disappear. Instead, let them float around for a little while. Let them sit on your desk or in a corner of your studio where you can see them, stand them up on a bookcase where you can look at them. So I think, you know, it's d don't force it, do trust it. And it definitely is a practice in self-trust for sure. And if the answer doesn't feel quite right, if you feel like you're forcing an answer, trust that. And I ask questions, like I literally say, is this really the answer, right? Is there a deeper meaning that I'm not seeing here? Is there something else I need to know about this? So I think it's also, you know, tapping into our limited wells of patience. We have so much input and so much moving all the time. I feel like we've lost uh, some of our capacity, at least speaking for myself, for patience. Patience is definitely not one of my virtues. Right, the secret garden came weeks later, exactly. It doesn't all come right in the moment, for sure. All right. I love her down here as if she's holding the space for the whole universe evolving and emerging around her. Where'd my butterfly go? I think we need, definitely need some butterfly magic on here. I still need a little something, something right here, but I don't know what that is. And I'll remind you, I think I said this the other day as well, but nobody, um, excuse me, or not nobody, but a, a piece of art doesn't need to be finished. One of the other things I really love about working with intuitive collage is that this doesn't have to be finished. I could be flipping through a magazine this evening or a month for now and find an image that I just know needs to appear on this specific piece, right? So that's one thing is to not ever feel like they're finished. The second thing is, and I, I learned this from my friend Leslie, like we don't always have to glue the, the characters down. So like this beautiful lady here, I am gonna glue her down because it feels right. 
but we can have traveling images as well that move from collage to collage. So for example, what did I do with that? I've got these, like I really loved this character. She feels super solid and grounded. I love the way that she's looking off into the distance and maybe she just visits. Maybe she just visits. She doesn't have to live here. So maybe she visits and then maybe we bring her over here to visit and she's looking at this child in the past, right? Over here, maybe she becomes the grandmother looking at her daughter and granddaughter. So traveling images are super powerful as well. Yeah, I love that. Um, and sometimes if you're having fun creating with collage, there doesn't always have to be a deeper meaning. And I think that the distinction here is, are you using collage to create works of art or works of meaning? And when we go into the creative process, thinking about I'm creating a piece that is about meaning, not about art. We create differently. We connect to our in intuition differently. And we're telling our minds that we're seeking meaning and meaning will emerge. But you know what? There is nothing at all wrong with just wanting to create a beautiful piece using collage, right? So I'm talking about a very different kind of collage making than maybe some just really beautiful art journal pages. But I believe that our journey with our art, our process through our art always has meaning. Okay, I don't know what this... little piece of, almost a part of a face here. Nope. All right, let's get some of this background off of this big butterfly. And I think this is going to be the last piece I'm going to glue down. Yeah, so Carol, I love that. So it's, you know, it's, it's got me thinking about the reasons why I create. So when, for me, art is always about storytelling. It's always about the inside out, but sometimes it's about play and experimentation and learning new techniques. And the story emerges from my own process of how I approached it or what I learned. And there's not a deeper meaning. But I'm someone who loves deep work. And so I am often spending time creating intentionally to find answers, explore aspects of myself, All right, it's a funny looking butterfly, but I like it. Yeah, no forced process, exactly. And J Jackie, I'm loving watching your big piece unfold. So beautiful. All right, so the last step is I'm going to trim around the edges some of this, trim some of this extra off. Except for her flower crown is going to hang out over the edge. This is the easiest way to do this so that we're, oh look, there's the gold gate. Hmm. So that we're not uh, 
worrying about edges and trying to get it perfect as we're going and we can stay in that intuitive. Okay. The gate's kind of interesting. Having been raised Catholic, it's like the pearly gates of heaven. What's behind the gate or the door? All right, I don't know why, but that gate is going to live right there on this piece. And I'm only going to glue part of the gate down because I think I want it to be movable. So we'll see if we can do that. So I'm going to glue just the... So now I have this gate and I have this beautiful woman emerging with the balloons. Maybe there's a little Demeter and Persephone story happening here. So all of a sudden these universal myths, archetypal imagery, stories begin to unfold as I continue to look at this and add pieces and add imagery. Yes, I've been thinking so much about that, Jackie, about the personal art um, and the public art, right? And for me, the, the art with meaning is my public art and my painting practice tends to be my personal art because this is what I teach. But I do notice the, the difference between my personal work and my public art as well. So I'm really loving this piece. I got a little goosebumpy right now. Just it feels open and expansive. So universal humanity, nature, the divine, all held and represented here in this one story and it holds the energy of all of the other stories as well. So when I look at this, what happens if I put this mother daughter in the center? Look how the story around changes. All of a sudden I'm seeing all my hopes and dreams and wishes for my daughter emerging here around the edges. What happens if we place our little girl reaching for the universe, reaching for magic? She no longer feels like a, a, a shadow child, but that nature child, that divine child who's reaching for magic and all that's possible. This reminds me of all the places Brad and I have been, all of our travels and our journeys from single to couple to children, right? I'm moving towards that wise woman crone energy. This one feels so weighty. Does it lighten up a little bit here? Or what happens even if I tuck it behind the gate a little bit? It kind of disappears into the universal which this card is a, a, a card about hiding anyway. So I'm like, I do not like that on there. It does not, it's not part of this story, right? I know, right? It's so true. 28 years, 28 magical years. Look at her. It's as if she was made to sit right in the center of this magical universe. This was the, my connection to spirit and the divine and nature, the divine child in me, opening up into this amazing, beautiful world. And I couldn't do any of it without friends, without love, right? So we, the stories begin to emerge and unfold. Perhaps there's a journey that goes from you know, me as a child, right? So maiden, we've got maiden, or well, we've got child, maiden, we've got mother, and we've got crone. So we have the all the aspects of self 
represented here in that universality as well. So, so many ways that we can shift stories, that we can take stories deeper, that we can map and play with different versions of what's emerging, what happens when these two hold the energy. They feel very different. There's a lightness here and a heaviness here, even in the context of this, right? So all the aspects of me are held within the universal. All the aspects of you are held within the universal. And as I'm looking at this, one of the things when you're interpreting your own collage that I want you to notice Notice how this character, the boy, the woman, they're all facing forward. This woman is facing off into the distance, reaching. This one is facing away. We can't see her face. So you start to just pay attention to the details of uh, how, how are they showing up, right? This angel here has no face, right? This child has sort of a neutral face. So start to notice colorways, uh, personalities, reflections, joy, serenity, wonder, laughter and play. This one feels a little bit like uh, exploration, right? You know, they're just stepping into the dance. So pay attention to the way characters are looking at you, looking at each other, or when you create a lot of collage that has images looking away from you, then you start to think about what isn't clear, right? What is still waiting to emerge? And then when I put this on here, there's a whole different story, right? That they all feel different. So some fun pattern play with our intuitive collage and creating some of these larger wheels. Sometimes I create these only with paint, no images, and they're just color and texture and marks and they become wonderful space holders. But I love the, the combination. And I'm looking at this uh, again going, I want it to have more of that bright blue, so I may come back in with some more paint and add a little bit more blue on it at some point. But for now, I'm going to let it sit right here on my table, probably still be sitting here when I get back from Florida, and uh, let it rest. Let all of these stories rest, and we'll see what else emerges as we continue on this journey. So as a reminder, I'm gone next week, and I will be back in the studio on April 30th, Tuesday, April 30th. So I will see you guys all then. Have a wonderful week, a wonderful weekend, and I can't wait to see what you create with some of your own intuitive collage. Bye everyone. I'll see you soon.